All right, Carl. It's you and I first. Our group. What you doing? I still don't understand how the vote could be unanimous. What could possibly convince them that them all to turn their backs on the oars here? If the forum is intent on concealing its intentions, then a cursory investigation will avail us little, I suspect. We will need to go deeper, and with the greatest of care. The process by which the forum members are elected is fair and equitable. Neither wealth nor social standing offers any advantages to a prospective candidate. But fairly elected or not, Master Moritaria still found them all to be insufferable. <laughs> awesome. But Terry's like, fuck this place. Our tour of the city was a pleasant distraction. I feel more than ready now to tackle the challenges of the day. Let's go. An unsettling change has come over Charlian, but together we will divine the underlying cause for the form's callous callousness. As I mentioned before, However, questioning the councils directly is a fruitless endeavor. They seem to have already come to a consensus as to what and how little they're willing to divulge. Which is why I began scouring Charlian's archives of historical records for any hint of connection to the final days. Suffice it to say, that progress has been slow. There are so many dusty pages one can skim in a day. But now that I have up this band of willing reinforcements, and the search for it should proceed all the swifter. Let's reconvene outside Nomenon, shall we? Exit the annex to the right, and you'll find the archives at the western edge of the woods. <laughs> you guys got woods? Cool. All right, I see you. You see you three lads in a bit. I was gonna look at what their dialogue had to say, but um, we'll just we'll do that after. My God. Do you have anything to buy stuff? Oh, we could go to an in room. That's as long as you like. We even got weed under the bed. Ah, oh, a summoning bell, a toy chest, my orchestration, my unending journey, my comfy leather bed. All of it's here. Cool. It's also for haircuts. I'm gonna stick with this hair, even though it clips through the shield. A little immersion breaking, but what can you do? Not only did I drink water, but Joanna must also drink water. I like that the haptic feedbacks on the the slight little vibrations on this controller uh, happen when you drink water. Like the gulping is literally vibration. Or, like, eating at least. The Nomenon, huh? I was about to use my fucking mount. Like, that would have worked. Or who is this person? Sudim's Holm, the Holm Man of Debate. So there are some who have taken a recording forensic victories, even betting on who will win and who will lose an argument? Oh my god. A sign of House Levier, who graduated quite a while ago, claimed the most wins and has yet to be dethroned. Oh my god. Appena really did just be like, I'm a bet on debates. You guys got a little forest. It's kind of nice. Damn, this place is kind of rocking, except for the evil people here. Beavis? Are you familiar with the wandering minstrel? The tales he spins never fail to engage in a draw. What I wouldn't give to receive a masterclass in storytelling from the minstrel himself. Oh my god, wandering minstrel. No. There's the studium. I know we're not supposed to go here, but I gotta get the internet shard here first. Wait, have I tuned to every place in the Charlian?
I believe so. That was it. There is no like exit gates though, right? There's just a harbor and um, there is one which gets past the studium's hall of the eater. Huh. Interesting. That must be the to labyrinthos maybe. As this has been exploring the city, I am ready to just get out there. Walk. My directions were easy enough to follow, I hope. In any case, you stand now before the doors of Nomenion, Charlene's grandest collection of books and tomes. The building is actually only an entrance and one of many at that, but the archives in Nomenion extend deep beneath the surface, like roots of a tree. The vast halls of the Great Gubal Library pale in comparison to Nomenon's endless maze of subterranean chambers. Any citizen of Charlene is free to enter and peruse its shelves. Well, most of its shelves. Only Archons are afforded access to certain restricted vaults. I've dispatched Shola and Ra to investigate those. Meanwhile, I'll say Navano will help me continue the search due to stacks open to the general public. Your status presents more of a problem. As a non-citizen, you're only permitted to browse the first floor here at the entrance. Even so, there should be a number of books which touch upon the Charlene history of foreign policy. Your task will be to find and study relevant publications. I promise you, a working knowledge of these subjects will make it far easier to spot the sort of clues we're looking for. Let's be about it, shall we? I've told others to meet us at the stone benches over there once they've found promising tomes. Happy reading! Our first quest literally be, like, read. I'm a master at reading. I'll play this game. Shajaba. I'm assisting a colleague on the hunt in his hunt for research materials. Specifically a thesis on by Mubrida! Oh but it's difficult to find any one tome in a library of this size. Oh. Look at these fucking bridges. Can I break it? And it fall to my death? Never to be seen again? In the books? Oh, are you looking for a specific volume? Only Archons may check out the Forbidden Tomes, but if there's anything else you inquire, simply say the word. And this magazine and books, oh, this is great. Brightly colored book. I like brightly colored books, the story of Shalian. Long, long ago on an island in the Northern Sea, there lived a Rokadan man by the name of Nuncrep. Yunkrep was a student of astrology, and he divined that the flood of terrifying proportions would soon sweep over the lands of Eorzea. So it was that he built a gigantic ship, assembled a crew, and set sail for that imperiled realm. The flood arrived as foretold, and to their horror, the strangely churning waters drove the people towards the ocean. It was there, however, that Yunkrep's crew hauled them aboard his ark. But danger had not passed. A towering wave approached, threatening to smash the vessel to pieces. With only moments to spare, Nunkrump wove a mighty spell of teleportation and shifted the entire ship to a safely atop Albertia's spine. Refugees from the surrounding regions huddled there alongside them. But it was not long ago before disputes over the dwindling supply of food led to violence and bloodshed. Aww. Saddened by the sight, Nukrep gathered from to him his crew and his grateful passengers and abandoned the Ark to those reddened peaks. They journeyed to the coast where they built a new ship, intent upon returning to the northern seas. They landed on the beach of an island and settled upon that very spot. That settlement prospered and grew, and in time it became a city of Charlian. We live in to this day. Hmm. I wonder how much of that is true. Legends always are changed through time. Ruins of the old colony. Ugh, the colony. Many years ago on the banks of the Daliak and the Dravenian hinterlands, a Charlene colony once thrived. This settlement was originally established in as a mere outpost to study the ethereal sea in the year of 1311 of the Sixth Astral Era. The scholars dispatched to Eorzea found the facilities wanting, and the demands encouraged a gradual expansion in structures and services. As rumors spread of a growing community of academics, 
the area was further inundated with Eorzean students hoping to share in the renowned wisdom of the Charlians. Fifty years later, the forum passed a motion to recognize what had become a flourishing town as an official Charlian colony. Eorzean residents took to calling the colony itself Charlian, which led to no small amount of confusion when discussions turned to the subject of the motherland. In response, some Charlian inhabitants have pressed for a name, but simply referred to it as Emporium. Following the Great Exodus, however, goblins and treasure hunters claimed for themselves a corner of an abandoned colony and gave it another name, Edoshire. Ah, the legend of Edoshire. Well, Chap is going to introduce the most prominent features of the Edoshire. The book does not appear to contain any additional information in the form or cover the history of Charlie and Motherland in greater detail. There's one over there. I can tell it. it's over there. Oh, Granville. I'm right over... I'm right in the middle of something, so you wouldn't mind leaving me to my research. Thank you. Meanie. Ah, oh, he's probably like, hey, what the fuck was that? Was that... Palum, were you good? Little bound home. The voice of the growing city. Hmm. And the use which followed the founding of Charlian civic policy and other matters of import were decided at the Ecclesia, a public forum at which every citizen was eligible to speak. Oh, sounds fun. As the city's population grew, however, this format became increasingly impractical. The larger number of participants grew gave rise to ever longer debates, resulting in insignificant delays of vital resolutions. Uh, slightly understandable. It's like, one of them is like, So, uh, can we get all on Fridays free fried chicken day? It's like, what does that have anything to do with politics? It's like, I'm kind of hungry on Fridays, and I think that would really help. It's like, oh my fucking god. Just everyone just starts talking about free fried chicken. Various measures were introduced in an attempt to curtail protracted discussions. Then the year 201 of the successful area, it was ultimately decreed that Trillian would transition to a new form of governance. The nation now would now be led by a body of 99 members, citizens chosen from amongst their peers by means of national vote, nationwide vote. Thus was the form, as we know it today, conceived and created. A uh, democracy, you know. Gotta love it. Only it's a little bit better nowadays. Sometimes it feels like democracy fails us in, in our good old states. An introduction to the heavens. I wave my arms in the air. To the heavens. Have you ever glazed in the skies above and contemplated the mysteries contained therein? I speak not of shifting cloud patterns, but the vastness of beyond. Of the sun and the twinkling tapestry of the night. Uh huh. I've thought about it. <laughs> Some think the dome above us to be finite space, yet amongst the leading thinkers of our age, one scholar's depiction of a boundless sea of stars has firmly taken root. Alas, this heavenly sea remains unreachable, unknowable destination. There are few indeed who can explain in satisfactory detail why our own stars is believed to revolve around the sun. It was the technologists of the Alec who came the closest to understanding the laws which govern that starry abyss. It was they who launched Dalamud and sought to expand beyond our earthbound existence. Having read their ancient ambitions, I wonder, has your interest in this field of study waxed or waned? What if I were to tell you that internal constellations were arranged differently in the distant past, that their positions continue to shift almost in perceptibly but measurably as we journey into the future would it shock you to learn that the stars drift further and further apart and may indeed do so forever are you eager to learn more well buy my copy for 5.99 the book is wrong is on the wrong subject search for the works which contain details on the forum i want to go out and learn about the stars i want to be an astrologian one day you know Forever 20 summers. My beloved seekers of knowledge, have you ever put learning before your health and neglected to feed the rest of your body as you should? Um, uh, replace learning with gaming and yeah, sure. I too was engaged in such foolish practical practices, but one night engrossed in the philosophical study, I had an epiphany. 
For all the world's mysteries that drive us to reckless abandon, we have so very few years of our life to achieve our goals. Thus do I share with you this mantra. I am forever 20 summers young. Uh, I would love to feel like that. The number itself is unimportant. You could be 19, 23, or 40. Whatever age you when you are when you discovered its manual, let that be the age you aspire to remain. Through mindful, healthy living, you will extend your time available to spend upon your chosen research. Another day, another moon, another summer to grasp the greater truths you pursue. Pursue, uh, peruse, pursue, whatever. Fuck it. In the state pages that follow, we will explore the secrets of maintaining one's physical condition from a biological, ideological, and arcane viewpoint. The book is on the wrong subject. Yeah. Speaking of, I forgot to stretch. I'm just gonna take a little break really quickly to just stretch. It's not gonna take too long. I, mean, I, I hope I keep the mic open. Stretching time! Fuck my headphones all Touching my feet. Ah! All right, now in the sky. Put my arms up. Oh, I see a squirrel out on the window. Just hanging on the on the tree. I'm revolving my neck slowly. I mostly do the stretches I did in gym. Y'all remember gym class? That, those are fun. But I also do some stuff I learned online. Ah! The Shirley and book is amazing. Also, it's very weird to see my level go up. I know you can't see it, but the bar is going up. Crazy. It's been so long at 80. as I bump into the mic. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Hello. All right. That's good. <sighs> that felt good. Yeah, remember the stretch, kids. All that long playing. Can leave you limber, sitting in a chair. I, I knew I forgot something. This is the book I assume we need to watch or read. Tom Warren Tome. Stewards of Wisdom. 
During the chaos of a six umbral calamity, Archon Nuncrip, founder of the Charlian, bore witness to the madness and savagery of men. Brought to the brink of despair, upon raising a settlement on an island in an ordinary empty, he instructed his people thus. Renounce the ways of war, and pursue enlightenment through knowledge and reason. The Charlians took to heart the words of their savior, and thenceforth served as the stewards of wisdom. Upon the foundation of accumulated learning, they built a homeland unlike any other, a nation born from the strength of minds rather than the strength of arms. With knowledge and economics came shrewd trading. With knowledge of agriculture came bountiful crops. Engineering brought wells and sewers, ending squabbles over water. Wealth of expertise could be bartered for wealth in coin, and the more their wisdom spread throughout the world, the more mankind as a whole would thrive. And so it was that no matter the trials and tribulations of the age, the citizens of Charlian would live by the Founder's teachings. For the sake of a better tomorrow, and for the sake of a brighter star, they would eschew the tools of war, and with knowledge, deliver the world. Okay. So, you know, the new, this new crypt guy, pretty important. They are mammoths! Oh. We apologize for the inconvenience, but the reference desk is currently experiencing unusually high volume of requests. Please stand by until the issue is resolved. All oh, fancy 14 servers in a nutshell. <laughs> Look at them running! I was wondering what those little people were. I thought it was like... And there's a lot of levels. It's like, nah, there's, there's, there's mammoths. Okay, since we have mammoths, you know what? Where are you? GG! It's your people, GG. Look! Look at them, um. Walk about. GG's actually a lot smaller than this mammoth, though. Those are some big mammoths. Destination. Everyone's here. There's a wind up brain over there. Guys! It's kind of cold out here. Can you please hurry it up? I wonder when Alphana will learn to be a sage. Sorry, were you waiting long? I want to make sure I borrow at least a few promising volumes. Avenel Crow should be along shortly. I was delayed in similar fashion. As far as I could see, no titles of the Archon stacks mentioned the final day specifically, so we have no choice but to start with the tangentially relevant tomes. If they even are that, or even that. At present, the plan to skim to as quickly as we dare and share our discoveries as we make them. It would have seen it would have been nice to visit everyone at to the estate. Plenty of comfortable places to read, and ready supply of hot tea. Oh, I was always fond of reading outside. But it's not about the little pleasures, is it? You miss your home. It's been difficult. After our arrival, we managed to speak with one of the family servants and ask how things were. It seems our dear father has instructed the staff that even if Alphano and I were to return to Charlian, we were not to be allowed across the threshold. Aww. A harsh measure indeed. I hope that our efforts to understand his position and that of the form will perhaps lead to a reconciliation. We'll mend this rift one day. I'm certain of it. What of you, Graha? Have you been to visit your family? Or do they not live here in the city? Ah, well, my situation is also somewhat complicated. I was raised in Charlie, and yes, but I was born rather far away. In the southern reaches of Isobard, in fact. For generations, my people have dwelt in Corvos, the coastal region opposite the island of Davne. The Elegans founded a city in that fertile land, and by ship brought in the subjugated tribes of the Mikote to serve as laborers. Aw. 
Of course, the massive earthquakes from the Earth Fall from a calamity brought an end to the Empire's reign. And when the fifth calamity froze the sea solid, many of tribes still living in Corvos braved the journey back to Eorzea. Also, this Shadowbringer's music. Oh man. My ancestors, however, chose to remain, and they might prevent the remnants of elegant technology from being misused. Isn't Corvos under Garlean rule? The past 50 years, yes. Some resemble the local culture remains as is. Uh, a case for most imperial provinces, but Garlemald renamed the region Locus Amonis. Maybe we'll go there as his own. When I was a boy, a nearby town came under jurisdiction of an illustrious imperial army. The nobles of House Darnus. Darnus, that seems very familiar. House Darnus demonstrated a singular interest in elegant civilization. So my tribe was forced to consider a plan of action. For some time already, voices had been raised in favor of abandoning our ancient customs. After all, the elegant eye no longer passed to our eldest children as reliably as it once had. Fear of discovery eventually ripped, tipped the scales, and the decision was made to bury our ties to the knowledge and traditions of Alec. The last child born with the elegant eye I was given over to the custody of friends and the student of Baldizian, who had me registered as a Charlian citizen. So we basically ran away. Yeah, that makes sense, though. I never even considered... Oh, damn it! Uh, hang on. I never even considered... Uh, forgive me if it was an unkind question. Even Tenkud was taken in by Archon Louis Law. Louis Law, was he not? Stories of adopted waifs and rescued orphans are more common among Charlians than you might think. If regardless of our origins, we are provided with an equal opportunity to learn. With sufficient per pisacity, we outsiders can even earn the vaunted title of Archon. This is exactly why I have such love for this country, and why I wish for it wish to it to remain a nation of which its citizens can be proud. Yeah, it does sound like a, a ideal country. You know, when the, when the forum isn't acting like assholes. Here, here. Another good reason to get this to the bottom of the forum's stubbornness. Aside from the traveling matter of our impending doom. Yeah, that too. Excuse us while we try to make some headway into these books, Joanna. More company should be arriving any moment now. <laughs> I guess that we're here again. So we learned Agraha's past. How the Gar- How, uh, Makoti were subjugated by the Alex in, like, around the 5th Amber Calamity? Or oh, the 4th or so. And then they were, uh... Well... And then, uh, his descendants stayed there for a while until the Garleans came by and were like, We're taking the knowledge! We're gonna use it for evil shit! As we do, you know! And it's like, Oh no, that's bad. And uh, they left, and he went over and became an orphan here. We've returned with our selections. Although I must say, the pickings were quite slim indeed. Mr. Kyle has already flicked through every history book devoted to disasters, and more than a few which barely made mention of them. As such, we will be looking into research papers on the Umbral Calamities, as well as articles written by prominent forum members. Perhaps their knowledge of the final days comes from an unexpected source. Speaking of which, I might ask you a few questions related to the final days. I'm the only one here who didn't witness the events in Amarat firsthand, and fear I may be overlooking critical details. That's a good idea, yes, I should probably- I have expertise in Amarat. My thanks. Now, where to begin? First things first, what kind of phenomena did the ancients encounter as the final days drew nigh? That one's probably... The worst kind of phenomena you can imagine! Ooh! Stop banging the damn mic. Complete destabilization of creation magics. Yeah. 
Yes, the unfolding catastrophe wrought havoc on all manner of life. The chaos extended to the ancients themselves, causing their powers of creation to spiral out of control. Fear and despair manifested in terrible, tangible fashion. Meteors raining from the sky, fire erupting from the ground. Indescribable abominations prowling in the streets. That more or less aligns with my understanding. If only the arts of creation had survived until the present day, we might have had something substantial to analyze. To our best of now, to the best of our knowledge, however, those techniques were not preserved or passed on. You should also surmise that the closest known magic is that of the summoning rituals propagated by the Asians. And summoners. Summoners do. Maybe. I guess it's kind of close. Was there aught else of note which heralded the approach of the final days? Oh no, you can answer this one. <laughs> the entire star was engulfed by disaster all at once. I think it was anyway. I think you may be misremembering. As I recall, it was more of a gradual spread. Okay, I kind of guess it was that. I don't know why. <laughs> Is there like a... Do we get like extra experience if I answer correctly? The Amorotans spoke of the keening sound that rose from the land itself just before the region was visited by catastrophe. I did not remember about the keening sound, but thank you for reminding me. We never did hear this sound ourselves, of course, just as we were into the midst of the madness. Keening sound. So the ground was crying out, you say? To be considered the harbinger of doom, it must have been quite distinctive, and probably quite loud. I'll have to speak with one of Nomonin's mammoths and ask after any books which make mention of a, such a sound. Last but not least, would you describe the ancients sought to quell this unprecedented calamity? What definitive action did they take? Did not tell him from the sky? <laughs> uh, they summoned Zodiac. I don't know what the Zodiac even is supposed to be. Like, what religion did they... they I guess they believed in the Zodiac. Yes, with Elidibus serving as his heart, so many gave themselves in sacrifice to bring him into being. We did not know exactly how Zodiac brought salvation to the star, only that he, by his godlike will were the laws of nature set aright. Then, once the balance was redressed, the ancients offered up further sacrifice to heal the ravages of the final days. Lives spotted anew, and it was the fledging souls that they intended to render unto Zodiac. A trade that would have allowed them to resurrect the sh shades of loved ones absorbed by the primal. Or might have, had Fanat and her fellows not manifested their opposition in the form of Hydaelyn. Hmm. Thank you, both of you. For the detailed review, I feel much more confident now in my understanding of the events. With all that firstly in mind, it does make me wonder what the Talapuroim truly mean when they speak of bringing back the final days. We've seen what they're doing with the towers of theirs is forcing people to summon primals a kind of catalyst? Are they attempting to mirror the conditions caused by the unstable creation magics? Or are they simply using the final days as a figure of speech, a convenient metaphor for the scale of destruction they plan to unleash? Ah. <sighs> But all this pointless conjecture at this stage, let's return to our attention to the forum, shall we? Maybe they know more. We should keep an eye out for Ishtola, but this, this time we begin studying these research papers. Oh boy. What the f- Okay, that was weird. I guess all the minions just came in at once. This is me studying research papers. Study, study, study. Also got this uh chocolate with me. And I'm gonna open now. Oh maybe. I'm the last, am I? Well, my extended search of the Archon stacks produced one or two possibly useful books. But I wouldn't get your hopes up. If you recall, Rianje learned the source's reflections from the Girun Oracles. For its potential to cause panic and confusion, the tome was deemed Apophica and sealed away in the Great Gobal Library. 
there's even less likely that the knowledge of the unsundered world, not to mention the horrors of the final days, would be left sitting on a shelf for any curious scholar to find. It stands to reason, then, that my colleagues, be they archons or counselors, should perforce be largely ignorant of the subject. Yet when you confront Master Fortunal with knowledge of the Telophora and their machinations, he scoffed at the suggestion that they posed a threat. He seemed adamant that the Forum would know if the final days were truly upon us. That's the biggest thing! Like, how do they know that? Which only supports the conclusion that whatever privileged wisdom is guiding the Forum's behavior is being kept secret from the rest of the nation. Not that I mean to excuse myself from reading duty, whether they contain mention of found days or no, these books could yet hold something of value. You weren't thinking of leaving, were you? There's plenty of work for everyone. Uh, <laughs> so much reading. And so we read. You labor for what feels like an age as you stole a research assistant. Well, at least I get to be her research assistant. That's a positive in one note, right? I also wanted to look at how many dropped frames I had. Very little. Very little indeed. You know, we're doing good. We're doing good on the stream so far. That's good. And I don't mean to push my luck, but at least the uh, internet is... The servers are doing okay so far. Hopefully. Oh, dude, you look exhausted. But what about your studies? Were you able to find any books on the subjects I mentioned? Yes. Then the day was well spent. Should you wish to read them again, I'm Mamet at the reference desk will point you in the right direction. For the moment, though, I suspect suggest you take a well-deserved rest. We might be so uh, be occupied with our research for quite some time. Ba, 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 ba. Alright, um, let's look at the journal. How does our character feel about all that research? It's... Nope. Oops. Oh, it's in two. Endwalker. Hitting the books. Despite your exhausted appearance, Corral and uh, Lasser actually expresses doubts that the sensitive knowledge you seek would be contained in Numenon's public archives. She is one of... She's of the opinion, however, that some snippet of useful information might still be found, and it lists you as her research assistant. After what feels like an age, it released to speak to Kral. Same books you located earlier. For the moment, however, you're excused from further reading duties. Finally. No more research! A seat at the last end. Alice appears in a desperate study break. Ready for a tea break, Joanna? I know I am. Honestly, my neck and shoulders are going to calcify if I don't stretch my legs and walk around for a bit. You know the last stand down in the harbor, don't you? Come and meet me near the outside tables. I'll treat you to their coffee. It's quite good. You know, uh, there's a manga coming out. Uh, a spin-off manga of Alice and Alpha in the school days. Although I think it's very, um... Not canon, because it seems... Uh... No, it seems very not canon. But... You know... I still would like to see you to read it. Because I think, like, Estidian is, like... A student there. And Ishtol is also a teacher. Does that same thing says The Last Stand? No, but Scholar's Harbor is close enough. Stoll is a teacher. Raha and this are students. It's like, you know, it's, it's not canon work. But it would at least capture the feel. Someone is half naked. Good on them. Hello. You're the good outsider. I have a little less to discuss with foreign barbarians. Fuck you! 
As busy as ever, I see. How very shyly and then no other gourmet cafe has sprung up to compete for customers. Actually, this crowd gives me an idea. Before we place an order, why don't we ask a few questions and gauge the mood of the city? I'm interested to hear what the average citizen has to say about the Talaferai. Might even learn something new. Worth a try, don't you think? Hey, I'll see. What's that? Oh, fucking goddammit. What? What is it? Can't a man, can a man not enjoy a moment of private respite? If you're looking to share a table, then I respectfully request that you look elsewhere. You misunderstand, sir. We were simply wondering if you knew of the Talafroi, the enemies of peace, have promised an end all we hold dear and... Wait, you're that House Livier girl, aren't you? And this woman would use obviously a foreigner. Huh. I'd heard you were disowned for helping outsiders indulge their barbaric whims, and here you are giving truth to the rumor. I'll take you to leave me be. I've not to say to the likes of you. Well, I must apologize. It was foolish of me to expect an ounce of civility from one so enlightened. Come, Joanna. Fuck you. Go upstairs, I guess. Can we fish here? If only. Hmm. Those are nice outfits. Um, so. Come here often? Yes, I don't believe I have the pleasure. Excuse the interruption, but we were hoping you might share your thoughts on the Talafroi and their unconsequable plans. My goodness, if it isn't the young Miss Levy here. My apologies, but I work in the offices of the forum, and if word reached Master Fauchinot that I was helping you. I, I see. We're sorry to have bothered you. This sucks. <laughs> I feel so bad. I'll say you good. Well, the customers have been decidedly uncooperative. Maybe the staff would be more willing to answer our questions. Come on. Don't turn us away. Please. Welcome, madam. What can I offer you today? Wait, is that Mr. Salisay I see there? My word, how long has it been? Far too long. Meet Dickon, the owner of The Last Stand. I used to frequent his cafe on occasion, in between lessons at the studium. Oh, that seems like an age ago now. I remember hearing that you and Master Alfano had said silver Eorzea, but then you never came back. Lately there have been gossip with your father disowning the pair of you. Everything alright at home? Nope. Sadly, that gossip is true. It's complicated. And I hadn't expected complete strangers to be so familiar with our situation quite so quickly. Everyone has an opinion, it seems. Well, it is House Levier. No matter how discreet Master Fauchinod may have been, news of your family's doings never stay secret for long. Things being what they are, what brings you back to the city now, of all times? We have questions that only Charlene has answers. Tell me, Master Dickon, have you heard anything about the apocalypse called the final days? What, like the end of the world? Nothing like that, I'm afraid. And that's what you're here to find? Information on this apocalypse? Yes, whatever we can learn. Unfortunately, your patrons appear to be unwilling to speak with me. I wish there was more I could do to help. You sure there's nothing? Hmm, but maybe there is. You're a visitor to Charlene, aren't you? Yes, I, you know, I, I tend to visit here. Then V will know your face. We should be able to pass you off as a server with none the wiser. We just finished preparing few orders. Strike up some friendly conversation while you're unsettling down the food, and you might get the answers you're looking for. Not a bad idea. I hate to ask, but what do you think? Joanna, the server in this knight armor. has the spirit. Pay attention now, and I'll explain how each of these dishes needs to go. Oh god. Do I have to actually memorize this? <laughs> The tea is set for a chatty group. The water's edge. You know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Hang on. 
No, this isn't cheating. This is just writing it down. T for chatty water. The omelette is for one of our regulars, a Highlander by the name of Gisla. She's sitting at the outside table with a friend of hers. Omelette. Gisla. I misspelled omelette. <laughs> It's right down into the screen! Oh my god. Behind them, you should see Makoti gentleman. He ordered the oven baked lobster. Makote passed them. Makote lobster. Got all that? If you're not sure, just ask and I'll explain again. Good luck. No, don't worry, I, I wrote it down. I have to play this asshole again. Oh no, someone different, thank god. Uh, don't think any of you are in. Yeah, you guys are chatty, so. Here we go, T. Oh, my T set. Lovely, thank you. Oh, someone's here. I, did, I didn't notice them. <laughs> oh, they're so tiny. The Talavo who? I'm sorry, I've never heard of them. Or their uh, final days? My friends and I are somewhat uninformed when it comes to current events. Now, if you wanted to hear about the ritual arcane practices of the Sixth Astral Era, common or esoteric, then I'd be happy to talk your ear off. Cool. Gisla wants omelette. Ah, finally! Two, four, six, eight. Let's dig in, no time to waste! What a what a fun jingle! What the Talafroy? Ah, yes, I remember seeing the name in the latest Gazette, and then some grand claim about the end of days. Same old senseless warmongering. When will these fools grow tired of spilling each other's blood? Best stay out of it, I say. The four made the right choice, and I really support our decision to remain neutral. Yes, we should totally remain neutral as the basically the equivalent of Nazi monsters trying to kill us. Good, good idea. Like this urbane banter with a smile. No, he uses this oven baked lobster. At last, the oven baked lobster is mine. You have no idea how long I scrimped to save to suffer to afford this heavenly dish. Final dish is the first offer of it. Although I always claim on my friend's rush off speed, but it's just time cleaner. Mmm, mmm, lobster. Mmm, well, what it clear is, it's a collector's store. I traveled the world procuring things I haven't got here in Shy and priceless books. There's a rough specimen's love, so forth. So named a folk who trail after the reapers in the field. Oh, reapers. Picking up even grain, which was missed. I have all accounts cleaning the most particulars in the manning profession. It's a lot for me, but I just stress for me. I am kind of like where these could be lost forever. Why else would the gleaners be buzzing around with such a frenzy? Watch the harbor, you'll see what I mean. They're cutting loads to docks every day. Mm -hmm. I took my fort not like this. Interesting. You enjoy your lobster, cat. I'll say I found the information. In trouble with the customers? Were you able to get anyone talking? Interesting. They seem unaware of the final days, aside from whatever vague news the cassettes are printing. Even Dickon had nothing to offer, and he's the best source of gossip in the city. Uh, if the forum does have secret knowledge, then they've done an impressive job ensuring no one whispers it in the wrong ear. In any case, thank you for playing the part so well. Here, a cup of coffee, I promise. Thank you. Let's envoy, enjoy a drink somewhere else, shall we? Maybe behind the peristyle. Away from the gossip and the wagging tongues. Yeah, school gossip. Don't need their shit. What? 
Yes, this should do nicely. Ah, the way in and out of sight. Again, I keep forgetting to turn on on and off the cutscene thing. She drinking tea. No coffee. When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I'm so sorry. It sucks. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Uh, a little bit, actually. Graham was determined to keep us in the dark, and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy to keep uh -huh. us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. Right. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. Right. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been. How being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. <laughs> if I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. Mm hmm Oh, no. It seems that guy was very stubborn, as you say. And the gleaners. I think they're off to Labyrinthos or maybe somewhere else. They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. Should we go there too? Please, I want to go see the overworlds as well. I want to explore new areas. I'm an adventurer at heart, you know. The complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, mm -hmm. that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library, comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Ooh. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. Wait! Didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And gleaners answer to the forum. If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the forum is planning. Mm-hmm. Ready to go on an adventure? Should we try swimming? <sighs> the labyrinthine descent. As I excited to share your re revelations. Would you tell the others what we've learned about the gleaners? Go on ahead to Nomenon. I'll join you in a moment. Master Ticken will want his cups back. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, we could just take them as souvenirs. Oh, there's a side quest here. What is this? Ah! What do I have to be? Do I have to be like a crafter or something? Can I not do your thing yet? Uh, Elite and Dangerous. Where is that quest? Maybe somewhere. The sample of hand or land, either or both. Yeah. Okay. Waiting glove. A printing scent. I think we have to unlock that first, probably. Doll dash. Actually, we could look at recommendations. Hang on. I don't see any elite or danger and dangerous, so we gotta get a bounce. 
the main quest is all the way over there, back at the... Oh, we could just look at it. We don't need to look at the map anymore. Right? Yeah, damn, this is fucking great, yeah. Near the studio. Take off this pillow from this chair. Sometimes it gets in the way. I bump into this, this thing. Oh god, this is... I keep finding myself, like, accustomed, like, changing my, uh, positioning in this chair. Sometimes having to just be, like, straight into the mic is a little difficult, but uh, I try my best, you know. So we're gonna just, like, put it a little bit up here, so I lean a little forward on it, so I'm not always just resting in it. Because that, that becomes uncomfortable as well, you know. That being said, it's a pretty good chair so far. Um, I got a new one, if no one knows. I built it literally on Thursday when the maintenance was off, and I was watching Stone Ocean while doing that as well. The the, the, the building said like uh, 15 minutes, uh, but knowing my slow ass, I think I took like an hour. I think the the one thing I did have trouble with was with the wheels, and apparently all you had to do was just push it in. I was like, is that really how that works? Just pushing the wheels? I guess. Not even any tools. Just push it in. Welcome back, Joanna. Mm -hmm been for a walk and cleared your head, have you? Building more chairs, huh? Don't make fun of me, Carl. Not exactly. We did some impromptu investigating and turned up information on the gleaners. There could be some stuff in Labyrinthos. Some secrets. It makes sense. The cleaners take their requests directly from institutions and bureaucrats, but as you say, they ultimately answer to the forum. A sudden and significant increase in gleaner traffic and in cargo, it certainly gives the impression of an overarching plan being put into motion. Let us see you what theory we can build from the facts. As you still observed earlier, Num Numenon's archives appear to contain no information concerning the final days. Coupled with that, what Joanna and Alice learned at the last stand, we can be reasonably sure that most Sholians know nothing of the particular period of ancient history. Yet my father and his colleagues are not only familiar with the final days, but are also somehow certain that destruction being perpetrated by the Patalafor is wholly unlike these apocalyptic events. More so, if the forum claims to be so occupied by a duty such pressing importance that they saw fit to unanimously deny Eurasia's request for aid. And now the Gleaners, official agents of the state, have been mobilized on an unprecedented scale. I do not think it is a stretch to conclude that the Gleaners' recent activities are in service of the forum's secretive ends. In which case, our next course of action seems obvious. We visit Labyrinthos and assess the situation for ourselves. And if we're lucky, the cleaners will be far more receptive to our questions. I think it would be better than to bury my head in another dusty book. Can't keep reading. Oh, I would hate to spoil the surprise. As for myself, there are a few more subjects I would like to research. Research. I may join you later, but feel free to leave behind your borrowed books and be on your way. I'll see you to that. Each is returned to its proper place. That would be a great help. Thank you, Raha. Alright, we're off. Graha, keep on reading. Maybe you'll find something. Let's head down the stairs over there, and I'll show you where the entrance is. Yo, yo, yo! Ready? Labyrinthos is not too far from you, but you may find the path a bit disorienting. I'll take the lead, so stay close. Follow Alice. This is something you follow? Well, off we go then. Alice, please. <laughs> I cannot hide this pace.
it's pleasant here amongst the trees. We really should move along. You walk? I was like! I also, I walk faster than you. Now we run. Try to keep up. Keep the path straight ahead. I can literally what, run way faster than this. At least we can enjoy the sights. Damn it. Maybe you should stop pressing the button. Up here. Where are you taking me? I actually have no idea how the. Oh, there it is, yeah. I see it now. I thought, I thought you went inside. I guess there's like a. path over here. Here we are, through this door and down the stairs. You did remember to return your shroud back there, did you? It will make your life much easier if you need to come back in a hurry. Otherwise, we should keep moving. Yeah, do not worry. That being said, um, Curtis Gibbonia. Why isn't there no eight right here? Let's all. There we go. The Northern Empty, Old Charlie. It's only down there. Also, we have zero eight right tickets. I have no eight right tickets at all. They said that the fees would increase, but no, not from Charlie. Oh, there you go. Gugane is like the most expensive only. It was up to a thousand something. Can't believe it's so expensive. <laughs> so expensive to go travel to Kugane. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mechtild? Mechtild. You a mech? You new? I think it's... it'll take me a while to check all these, so you go on ahead. Wait, are you a lady or a... Oh, you are a lady. I'm sorry. You just have a deep voice. Like uh, that lady from... Oh my god! I love your hat. <laughs> this is a suit and a fucking chocobo head. You didn't take the wrong turn in the roster there, did you? I thought the forum would take kindly to you barging into that private session. I've not been to Labyrinthos in the longest time. Even as a student, my visits were few and far between. How did the forum learn of the final days and exactly how much do they know? More to the point, what do they intend to do about it? Hopefully the answer to at least one of those questions lies below. We're all here now, yes? I've taken the liberty of securing permission for our group's descent. Alright, everyone, on the lift and down we go. New area! Let's go! Ooh. Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. Yep. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves. And this vault's architects surely belonged to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. This <laughs> make an entire a city first, of, tech, and then of in research. A profound transformation. Sheep! Knowledge buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. Mm. 
Oh, I love the violins. Well, someone likened this song, the music here as the Teletubby music? Which I'm like, okay, come on. What? Nice sun! Why y'all got, got a false sun? I'm just Not like, what, what the expected. fuck? I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. Don't worry, I saw the live letter. I know about this area. But I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. That's crazy. Y'all are crazy. The island is volcanic, you see. And once upon a time, this great hollow must huh? have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 oh, kind of years ago, at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh on no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Uh-huh. Aren't those people gleaners? I, judging by their dress, they are said to work alone as a rule, but would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Should we like, uh, Let's talk with them? No, pretend to be like them? Oh, Carl, are you having a vision? Did you call to me just now? Heidelin? Is Heidelin calling to you? No. How odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. That Carl, no, that that's your it's your echo, uh, your power. Fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we? Um, okay. School uniform. A lot of bunny girls here. There's a wetter here also. Like cloudy days. I guess they like to do that, huh? Excuse me, are you a cleaner? If you don't mind, I have some questions to ask. Where is... I do wonder where the, uh, Aetherite is. There's one over there. Yep, there are actual enemies here. You wanna know what I'm doing? Haul in books, wind ore, and fauna. If it needs hauling, I haul it. Every decade or so, I take stock of that merit dust, you know, sort and tidy up the inventory. I've seen an operation like this before, though. They just did one a few summers ago, even. Then, with no warning at all, this mess just gets dropped into a lapse. Orders from on high. Then, if I know the reason. <sighs> Could they be changing the lay layout, eh? Perhaps the next big expansion. Interesting. What does that RP mean? I mean, they're into role play, or are they like a? There could be something more important. I'm not sure. Let me think. Let me think. The rare seeds should be item 1058. Cumin seeds. It's dead. It's cumin. Now it's cumin. I'm sorry. Cumin seeds 1059. Snarlberry 1060. Oh, what are you 1061? Oh, my head feels like a sub with moco grass! Why loads... Why more loads to take out and then carry in? Why do all of this at once and Rick's messing it up? Mixing it up. What if someone mistakes the carton carrots for Garibani carrots? What then? I don't know. Please stop screaming at me. Oh, yeah. Purchase weapons and shit. 
still level 80 stuff. Oh, is this the Hydurium? Is that what I have right now? Hydurium? Hang on, where is it? The coffers do I have? No, I have horse chestnut. Still don't know what that is. Gale skin. Is it the same? Oh, I think it's the same thing that was there, right? Is there anything I can wear? Nope. <laughs> nope. No. No. You a bunny boy? Oh, you are. You would help her give more. You need to help her give more headaches, because you don't have the look of a Galena, and I'm in no mood for idle chatter. One of my colleagues was so exhausted, he took a tumble and crashed into a pile of crates. Now I have the pack- Now I have a pack of moments running loose. Everyone's tired, they're just all doing this. Also, there is a nighttime team. Hang on, let's just listen to this for a second. I'm trying to move the camera slowly. I like this song, it's real peaceful. Any luck, Joanna? What tells did the gleaners have to tell? They're all tired and they're like, what the fuck? Why is this all happening at once? So this grand operation began without warning, and for every item they bring in, they're sending more inventory somewhere else. Ah, uh, that would explain the haggard faces I've been seeing. We were right. The form is definitely up to something. And they're turning labyrinthos upside down in the process. We're afraid rat capture. We do well to learn more of what. Specifically, the cleaners are being tasked to do, as well as who tasked them to do it. If you're game, Joanna, I have an idea. <laughs> I like how I lean down to hear her idea, like, yeah? Didn't one of the cleaners you questioned say something about escaped marmots? Perhaps if you were to help him capture said creatures, he might be inclined towards a more friendly, enlightening conversation. In the meantime, I will turn my charms upon this cleaner here. We can compare notes afterwards. Happy hunting! Speak with Aaronville. What? Yo, oh, Aaronville, what up? You wish to help me find Mammoths. I'm not suitable to pay you for your services, but if you're offering out of the goodness of your heart, I'd welcome the assistance. I am fellow Vieira. The name's Aaronville, friend. Specialist in collective of live specimens. They said uh, uh, the capture of these Naxian mamas is a trial I've no desire to repeat. Grizzled mice, they call them. For a mercy, there are no other marmot species on this tier at present, so there should be no mistaking our little fugitives. If you happen to catch any- oh, well, sorry ma'am. Uh, stuff them in this sack. Gently, of course. I'll try. Where to begin, you wonder? Uh, I've not seen them scampering around here, so you'll need to widen your search into the surrounding forest. Be on your guard. There are beasts out there that won't hesitate to prey on a marmot. Or you. How do you have beasts in a fucking storage facility? I'll search the trees to the west and the eastern part of the forest is all yours. Good luck. How does any wildlife live here? It used to be a volcano. That's crazy. Hey, Stola, what up? You looking over at the... What you doing? Nah, I'm not checking my duties. 
I've not need. I've not been down here in an age and wished to get my bearings before I went fumbling about. From what I can see, however, there is not obviously out of place. It seems we shall have to resort to discreet inquiries at actual. Mm hmm. As usual, no. This one I won't put up G-Pose, I'll just take a photo of it. Alright, cool. Oh, another break time, I gotta use the bathroom real quick.